Greetings YouTube, Sega Zombie here and welcome to another Sega Wall Lockdown Isolation Special number 19 guys. Well, I've gone the longest stretch so far in this lockdown without doing a video and there's, and there's a number of reasons for that guys. Solely one, I've been feeling a bit down if I'm going to be honest with you, I've not been in the mood for it. Um, something that really cheered me up, and as you can see, we're in a different angle, is Street Rage 4. Now, I'm not going to do a video just on Street Rage 4, guys. There's plenty of people that do a better job at doing a review than me. My personal opinion of the game, it's absolutely fantastic. It's an awesome, awesome game. If you're sitting on the fence over this one, guys, if you're unsure, just get it. Grab it. Um, I was going to do a rant video, to be fair, and um, I was all geared up to do it, but I've had so much fun with Streets Rage 4, it's rudely interrupted my Dreamcast videos and my Dreamcast gaming, and I have literally blasted and caned this game to death. It's absolutely fantastic, guys, and a massive, massive deal, it really is, and that's why social media and all the retro groups and... Sega groups and YouTube is just covering this game. Fully deserved. It's an absolutely fantastic game. You're wanting to know what my rant was about. My rant was about the handling of the physical release of this game by Limited Run Games, but I could go on about that in a, in a video all of on, on its own. I've calmed down about it slightly now. I'm not someone that totally agrees with the concept of Limited Run Games. I'm not going to get political about it, guys. But it's just not my thing. Um, obviously, I have gone against my beliefs and purchased the physical release of Streets Rage 4. It's a long way off from getting the physical release, um, which I find a little strange considering they seem to take people's money straight away. But hey, uh, you know, I don't know the ins and outs of this um, this setup. Um, the thing that knocked me was I, as soon as this game was announced and there was going to be a physical release handled by Limited Run Games, I went straight in there and I got the collector's edition, you know, the one that it, it comes with the game and it comes in um, a variety of cases. Predominantly, the thing I was interested in was to get the Mega Drive Genesis reversible case um, so I can have that sitting in the Sega wall with my other games. Um, unfortunately, 24 hours before, this is all well documented, but 24 hours before the release of the digital um, Streets Rage 4, they then announced another limited special edition with loads of stuff in at $149.99, $40 shipping, a very limited opening, two openings for out one day, and I just thought that was a bit of a a low blow to be fair, but I'm not going to rant, I'm not going to go on about it, Streets Rage 4, an absolutely fantastic game, another little gripe which I am going to add is why the hell, I know Sega haven't developed and made this game, but they've gave their blessing, and they are the publisher, and at the end of the day, Sega, why on earth didn't you put this game out physically, I think it would have sold really well, you know, they tend to chuck out games like Super Monkey Ball, you know, if that would have been the Super Monkey Ball that everyone loves, you know, the original GameCube games, and I know it was released on the Xbox and the like, yeah, fair dues, but they go and release the really dodgy Wii edition of, of Monkey Ball, and it's just little things like that. I think Streets Rage 4 would have sold equally as well, Sega. Why the bloody hell, Sega, have you not put this game out? It deserves a proper full release, it really do. Other people have, we've all chatted about it in groups and stuff like that and many people that are a lot more clued up on, on all these strictly limited and limited run releases and all that are adamant that this game is so big that it's going to get another physical release. I hope it do and I hope someone does it proper 
Um, but that's my gripes over with, guys. I'm not going to keep going on about it. But this is why we're sitting at a different angle, um, a different part of the game pad, and my main TV. Another guy, I'm full of moaning today, guys, full of it. I think my TV's gone wrong. I've got a, an LED, two LED lines gone down the center of my screen, and that's another reason I've spent so much time on the phone to Toshiba and the like, because this, this TV is just just over a year old and I'm absolutely gutted that there's a problem with it. The money, it's a 4K, 55 inch TV, so it wasn't cheap and yeah, that's gone wrong on me. Um, <laughs> and now my soundbar's not working, so yeah, I'm having a real good time at the minute, guys. But let's stop with all this. This isn't Sega Zombie being all negative. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do this angle in a bit of a different video. Because Streets Rage 4 is interrupted, and what I've done is I've got the physical release coming on the Switch whenever that will be. I've been told it's going to be two to four months shipping um, on that for the Switch, which you can just about see, I think, in the corner there. And also on this TV, I have set up my PlayStation 4. Now with the lockdown, I have been dabbling in PS4, me and my brothers, we've been having group sessions and playing games late into the night and things like that, and it's been a right laugh. Um, so that's got me back into the PS4, obviously I've got the download version of Streets Rage 4 on the PS4, so I thought it was pointless getting on the Switch, so I've got it covered on both my main current gen consoles. Um, and I thought, why not? Let's do a video, which I don't often do, on, on my more modern gaming setup. Why not? Um, you can't see below here, so what I might do is um, I'll go behind the camera and we'll go through some of the games I've picked up during lockdown, some of the games I've played, some I've yet to play, and just go through my collection. I've noticed a lot of YouTubers are doing this, and you know I've found it fascinating and found some really good games that I don't know about because I'm really not hip guys, I'm not up with modern gaming, um, it is retro, 90% of my gaming is retro, so you know, I've found some really good cool games, and yeah, just share some of them with you guys. But before we get into all that guys, we've got to do what we always do at the beginning of all of these lockdown specials, is we've got to do our shout outs, and I've got to put some wrongs right, and I thought I'd already shouted out this guy, and um, he put a cheeky comment in my last video, and it turns out I haven't. I, I did talk about this guy when um, he was live on the Sega sessions with me, I believe it was, um, a few weeks back, um, but it turns out I haven't given him a shout out, so let's put that wrong right now, and that's Lee, Retro Chef. Now, he's been missing off the tubes for a while. He's got an absolutely brilliant personality, is Lee. Real bubbly, real loves his um, Nintendo Wii U. Um, a great system, that is. Um, yeah, and I used to love all his booters, all his pickup videos. And on the stream we was on, he was sort of saying, you know, he hasn't done YouTube because he hasn't been picking up games and the likes. And, um, you know, with the lockdown especially, and I've said, and me and the other said, Lee, it's not just about what you pick up. It's about you as well. You know, he's a great personality, like many of the pickup guys that do videos. And it don't matter what you pick up, as long as there's a story to tell. And with Lee, there always is. And his bubbly personality is a laugh. He doesn't take anything too serious. And yet, he's a great channel with the lockdown and with the streams he's been on. It's inspired him, he's back uploading, he's just done his full, or his um, Wii U collection video, which was a really good watch. Um, so yeah, go and check out Retro Chef, guys. Next up is, um, in my last video, I, I asked you guys to let me know in comments some channels to shout out, because with these lockdown videos, how they're going on, I'm running out, you know, I'm going down my subs list, and. I've noticed that I'm getting down to a few channels now that I want to shout out and um, I've asked you guys for your input and some of the channels you watch and Mr. G77 um, commented saying that I need to check out Zeus Daz. Now this is a massive YouTuber and um, yeah, he's got over 7,000 subs. 
but I'd never heard of him. And this is what's fantastic about the community and, and this and doing these videos and me putting that that shout out out there is that we have now got or I've now discovered through Mr. G77 Zeus Daz. He does a different style of video. It's not just it's not pickups really. It's more gameplay with commentary. And he does everything from Spectrum to Mega Drive. You name it, he covers it. And I've been glued to watching his videos, guys. So if you're like me and you've not discovered Zeus Daz, go and check him out. And thank you, Mr. G77, for pointing that um, channel out. Great stuff. Likewise, guys, if you've got channels that I haven't mentioned yet or you think I'm going to enjoy, please put a comment down below so I can shout them out to everyone. Uh, big or small, big or small. It's just getting that exposure and, you know, and getting everyone so they've got plenty of content to watch. Um, and finally, uh, my fellow admin on Galaxy Sega. Um, she's gone down a bit of a different path of her YouTube of late. Um, I really enjoyed her videos where she goes into depth about her passion for Sonic and Knuckles in particular. And she speaks fondly of all the Sega games. She loves the Dreamcast. And that is Retro Faith. Um, so yeah, please go and check out Retro Faith, guys. Another fantastic channel and a true lover of everything Sega. So yeah, go and check out Retro Faith. They're the free shout outs for today, guys. And then um, finally, we got, a, we got a parcel or we got, we got something through the post. And um, yeah, we've got a, a jiffy here, guys. And this is a massive shout out to Tutti, Tutti UK, um, Stu, um, one of my earlier isolation lockdown specials when, the week when we was covering the Mega Drive. Um, I talked passionately and a lot about this game and that's Felios on the Japanese Mega Drive and I picked this up a good number of years ago off my Sega brother Ryan Connors and unfortunately it didn't have a manual. Now Stu's watched that video and lo and behold he sent me the manual. Um, I knew I had this somewhere, all the best Tootie Stu. Thank you so much Stu, that means an awful lot mate. To get one of my favourite games on the Mega Drive complete is tremendous. He's even put it in one of the 2 e specials, one of his little plastic bags. And finally, isn't it great to put something back in its rightful home? And look, it's now, oh, he's going to moan at me if the cartridge is around the wrong way. And now it's complete. I'm absolutely chuffed sick with that. Thanks again, Stu. Um, really chuffed that you're happy with the PC Engine games, mate. Um, and yeah, really chuffed with that. That is awesome, mate. That's awesome. So, what we're going to do, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to pick up the camera now. I'll be behind the camera and we'll take a look at my modern setup and run through some games. So, here we go. Here's my modern setup in the game pad. Like I mentioned earlier, my 55 inch. 4K Toshiba TV that has given me loads of grief over the last couple of days. I don't think you guys are going to be able to see it. Yes, you can. We've got a line running down the middle of the screen. It looks worse on other pictures, images. But yeah, we've got that to contend with. I'm trying to get that sorted. And my dodgy old soundbar that's not working. <laughs> But yeah, as you can see, I've got my switch set up there. Um, and then as we go down, there's my slim and my virtual reality um, VR2 headset. Now, this was a purchase I made um, last year when I got made redundant and got paid off. I treated myself and the family to um, VR. And that's when I decided to buy another PlayStation um, for Slim because um, I did have a launch PS4 and I just wasn't playing it to be fair guys it wasn't getting any love so I sold it on a while back to a work friend and um, yeah I purchased a Slim 
PS4, got the VR um, version 2 headset and managed to pick this up in a great deal second hand off a local. Um, it was like brand new and um, I've only just set it up in the game pad since we moved in. Um, because a recent purchase, another pickup to show you guys is this. A VR holder that I got off um, Amazon. It's about 18 quid off Prime Spark Fox. It's it's a pretty decent stand. It was why I hadn't set this up because um, my daughter has been crazing me to play this, but I just didn't have anywhere neat and tidy to house it. And that sits lovely on that stand. And um, yeah, it's really brought a lot of life back into the PS4 and a lot of interest for me and the kids. We really do adore VR. And yeah, let's have a little closer look at the Some game. the games, guys. Let's take a closer look. Some of the games I own. And we've got Operation Warcade, which is very similar. Well, it's a kind of tribute to Operation Wolf. So you know me, I had to get this. And it's quite. A, it's a low-budget game, a cheap game to get. And it kind of plays like you're in an arcade and you're playing... Operation Warcade, but you can clearly see that it's a take on Operation Wolf, and it's a VR game where you get immersed into the arcade game itself. Graphically not great, it's, you can tell it's a very low budget title, but a blast. Me and my boy, we had a real, real laugh on this game. We really did, and it, and it's fun. You know that's what it's all about. Um, one I recently picked up from a second hand shop. A Raiden 5. Now, I absolutely love the early Raiden games. Not too familiar with the more recent titles. To be quite honest, guys, I was kind of disappointed with Raiden 5. The gameplay gets... The pace of the game gets broken with loads of silly story content. Yeah, it's not really my cup of tea. It's okay. It's not bad. But I would prefer to play the early Raiden games if I'm being fair. But it's all right for what I paid for it. And then a game that came with my um, slim PlayStation, which I purchased because um, my actual launch PS4 I sold a while back because I just weren't using it. Um, but yeah, I, I did reinvest in it into a slim, and this game came free with it. It's still sealed, Doom VFR. Yet to unseal it and play it, even though I've had this for absolutely ages, but I'm sure I'll get round to it. It looks good. And then you guys knew I'd have this in the collection. Um, yeah, I backed it, waited all these years for it, and guess what, guys? Yep, it's still sealed. I've not played it, um, which is shocking. But um, I'm sure with the lockdown, uh, that's going to change, definitely. If this lockdown goes on any further, I am going to dedicate a load of time to Shenmue 3. My God, how have I not played through this game? I adored the other two games on the Dreamcast. So it's got to be done. So yeah, there's the backers Shenmue. Again, another game that came through my PlayStation bundle. And um, that's Gran Turismo Sport VR. Not had a chance to play this one neither. Is it any good, guys? Let me know. An absolutely fantastic game. And those of you that follow my channel will know that I absolutely adore Tempest. Love Tempest 2000 on the Atari Jaguar. You know, Tempest is one of my favourite games, and I had to get this um, physically on the PlayStation 4. Jeff Minter at his finest, an absolutely fantastic game. Not sure if it's out yet, but I know it's rumoured that they're going to be bring out a VR mode of this. He wants to bring it VR. It would fit brilliantly, I think. It's an absolutely fantastic game. It goes absolutely manic. It really does. And I love how the game's core is still there. It just tweaks it and refines it slightly. An absolutely fantastic game. And then next up, another game that I think is one of the best VR games I've played so far. And that's Blood and Truth. London gangster style absolutely fantastic such an immersive adventure game exactly what you were, you was expecting vr to be you know i can remember being absolutely fascinated with and the imagination of vr back in the 90s going to london to the trocadera center playing those big bulky huge vr arcade machines and 
you know, this is what we was expecting. And, you know, we got all them big polygon limited sort of VR experiences back then. And this is the future. This is VR now. And this is exactly what I was expecting. Great acting in it. Great story. Adrenaline rush of a game. It really is. And like I said, it's so immersive. You really feel like you're in the game. You know, it's got all the finer details in there. You can vape, you can smoke, you climb. You know, you can wheel two guns. It utilises the move controllers brilliantly. It, what's really important with a game like this is the calibration of everything, making sure it all works, and it really does. It's an absolutely fantastic game, blood and truth. It really is. And another game that's absolutely stunning on the PlayStation VR and that's Astro Bot. My kids adore this game. Every time we set the VR up, we play Astro Bot. The kids love it. It's a really easy game to get into. It's one of the only games and these sort of games don't come up often when you play a, play a, a game that's not Nintendo and you think this really could be a Nintendo game and it kind of if if Nintendo done a VR Mario, you kind of think, feel that it would play like Astro Bot does. Really feels Nintendo, and it's an absolutely fantastic platformer. It really is. And um, yeah, again, a very immersive game. Then we've got Persistence, which is a game that got quite good reviews, I believe. And I picked it up quite cheap, but I've not had a chance to play that one yet, guys. Then the game that came with my PlayStation Slim, and that's Crash Team Racing. Again, the kids really like this. I've played it a bit. It's solid enough. Another great game that I picked up in like a cash generator or cash exchange. And that is um, Rush of Blood. Until Dawn, Rush of Blood. Absolutely fantastic game. You're in like a creepy-ass roller coaster. Double um, guns, just blasting rednecks zombies you know killer clowns all that sort of fare absolutely great visually and a rush it really is rush of blood a r adrenaline rush game really good and then yeah a game that i picked up and me and my brothers had a laugh on this one we really did shit ourselves up fucking jumped out of our skins while playing this we really did and that's resident evil biohazard vr a game I picked up from a booter, which I've not to play. It cost me a couple of quid, and that's Fallout 4. Then we've got Firewall Zero Hour, another VR game. And this one, yeah, it plays pretty well. Um, it comes with the, the big gun attachment, which I've got down the side there. And then the only PS3 game I still own, and that's House of the Dead Overkill Extended Cut picked a few copies of this up um, from a charity shop they were like free for a pound and this is mint it's got the glasses and everything I think I showed it off on a previous video I've kept that because the house of the dead overkill is an absolutely fantastic game that was released on the Wii originally and uh, yeah it got a PS3 move release and it plays even better it's like a yeah extended director's cut of the Wii game really really good and then I picked up Shenmue 3 again as a present for someone at Christmas. And I picked up from Game because I'd done a bit of last minute Christmas shopping. And um, the guys in there, they were like, um, oh, would you like one of the steel books, which was any supposed to be with the day one release? And I said, yeah, I'd love it. So they chucked that in for free, which is awesome. So that goes with my Shenmue 3. At the back there, we just got rows and rows of Blu-rays, guys loads of blu-rays another really awesome thing and it weren't until my good friend ian stewart pointed it out um with blu-rays is you can watch your 3d blu-rays through your playstation and through the vr and my daughter's been doing that loads she just recently watched monster house in 3d and it looked absolutely fantastic and she was just so immersed and so excited she absolutely adored it she really did so that gives the vr another use to sit and watch some 3d films and and i just pick these up from charity shops guys you can pick up the 3d movies really cheap nowadays so yeah that's great little avenue there i'm going to definitely pick up whatever 3d movies i see 
Um, up the back here, someone else, something else to mention is Ulysses 31, my favourite cartoon growing up as a kid in the 80s. Absolutely adored this show. An awesome cartoon. I keep threatening my daughter that we're going to spend a day watching daddy's cartoons. <laughs> she weren't impressed. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's sitting there waiting for us to play it. But yeah, there's a few of some of my favourite films. I've got, again, I'm, a, I'm an absolute massive film buff. I love my films. Zombie films, hence the Sega zombie name, YouTube name. And um, I've got the Sega wall, again, just in DVDs and Blu-rays. They're all still in storage pretty much, but here's a select few rows of Blu-rays that I often watch. Some great movies. I love my Italian horror. Um, I love Star Wars like most men of my age do. And yeah, some classic films there, guys. And then we're going to talk, or oh, I'm going to show you guys something I don't really show, and that's my DS collection, which is not a lot, I'm afraid. But I do enjoy the DS, and uh, my kids absolutely adore it. They've all got DSs. They've got tons of games. They really have what I pick up from booters and charity shops. A couple that I've kept for myself, Rainbow Islands, Revolution, a bit naff, to be honest. And then I've picked up one of the, the original, I believe, isn't it? Professor Layton game, because I enjoyed that when that first released, picked up from a charity shop. And then Pack Picks, an interesting sort of take on Pac-Man and drawing. Yeah, it kind of works fairly well. And then we move on to some of the 3DS games. Um, my lad's game, Super Mario Maker, he adores that game. And then every console has a Ridge Racer. And no different on the 3DS. I really like Ridge Racer 3D. A great game. And then you're going to be saying, Sega Zombie's got an RPG. Yep, I do. Xenoblade Chronicles. But that will come apparent to why I've got that shortly. Um, a great compilation, this Konami Classic series. It's got 15 classic arcade games on it, all pretty much arcade perfect ports. You've got Contra, Time Pilot, Gradius, Track and Field, Russian Attack, known as Green Beret. And it's also got Yi Ar Kung Fu on there, um, which is one of the reasons I wanted it. So I picked this up, a great little play that. Um, one of my daughter's games, Tama. Dachi Life, yeah, like a Sims type thing, I'd imagine. And you guys know I'd have this in my collection. One of the reasons I actually got a 3DS again, you know, I did buy the 3DS at launch. I buy most consoles at launch. The only console I've never ever purchased from launch and still haven't got is the Xbox One. Um, all consoles, I've always picked them up. Um, but yeah, I went and got... Um, another 3DS, the new 3DS, just so I could play um, Sega 3D Classics Collection. And then we've got a really fantastic port, and I think this was a launch game on the 3DS, and I kept hold of this, and that Street Fighter 4 3D edition. A uh, fantastic version of the game, that. Really enjoyed that. And then at the back here... This is why I've got Xenoblade, because I've got the limited edition Xenoblade Chronicles new Nintendo 3DS. That's the version I've got, guys. It doesn't get much play, to be fair. It hasn't done for a while. Um, but I really do like the system. And, you know, when I pick up the games cheap, if I see them, I'll pick them up. So, guys, yeah, we move on to the final modern, modern system I've got. And that is the Nintendo Switch docked here. Um, and yeah, in this cabinet here, if I just slide this across, we've got my Switch collection, a modest collection. I did used to have a lot of the AAA titles, Nintendo releases, but um, last year I cashed in on those, you know. The, the wonderful thing about Nintendo, and it's one of the only systems I'll buy new games on, is you pretty much get your money back or, you know, less a few quid when you come to sell these games and I sold on the likes of Mario Kart um, Zelda Mario Odyssey all of those games because I I'd, I'd played through them or played them till the end and just cashed in on them so I could invest the money in other things um, but yeah the boxes in the back there as well as the 
the standard G-Con controller. Um, i done a video on this a while ago, but this has never let me down, and it's like a Chinese knockoff um, pro controller. And do you know what? It's really good. It really is, um, but doesn't quite live up to the original um, and the best. Of course, a bit dusty, that, guys. Um, but a fantastic controller. One of my favourite modern controllers, this, the um, Switch Pro controller. It's absolutely fantastic. Feels really good in the hands. And yeah, a great pad, great purchase. So yeah, it's good to have a couple for uh, multipliers underneath here. And we've got the, the Retro Collector's Edition of Toki or Toki, which came with the... Um, the arcade stand for the switch which was really cool a uh, great little set that which i've shown off before but here's some of the games that i've been playing in lockdown i got this one world guns reloaded in um, since lockdown tough of nails originally a super nintendo game i think they've just you know up the up the resolution a bit and you know added some more characters i believe maybe some more missions as well um i've never played the original super nintendo game um which is fantastic for me because this is a right blast two new characters each with their own weapons and tactics new bosses new stages and special weapons so there you go guys this is cheap enough to pick up some of these sort of like limited releases and that are, 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 are pricey but this isn't this was definitely under 20 quid um, but Wild Guns Reloaded, really recommend it. If you love your 16-bit 2D sprite games, you're going to adore this. Kind of reminds me of Cabal, the arcade game, and come out on the micros and that. Yeah, plays very similar to that. You're behind your man. I love westerns. I love western-style games. Um, and yeah, really enjoyed this. But it is hard as nails, guys. It's not an easy game at all. <laughs> It is a tough one. And then we get onto another 2D powerhouse of a game, and that's Ninja Saviors Return of the Warriors. Again, I've mentioned this previously, but my God, what a game. I played this all the way until I finished it. Again, it was originally released on this version on the Nin um, Super Nintendo. Again, a game I've never played, but I know Alex fondly talked about this. And he mentioned this just before lockdown. And I can remember as we entered lockdown, he was saying how good this game was. And I just went straight out and purchased it. Again, it was about 15 quid. Really cheap. And it's an absolutely fantastic game, guys. You know, it really did entertain me for a few days this during lockdown. A quality, quality game. Um, the original arcade Ninja Warriors, um, like I've mentioned before, was released on all the micros um, never really got a great port until the Mega CD but it was only released in Japan which is a bit of a bummer um, and then the obligatory FIFA which I play with me lad and my brothers um, I've only got 18 yeah, FIFA isn't great on the Switch to be quite honest it's a separate engine separate game and yeah I'm not up with buying the latest variants of that game and then I must have the Mega Drive Classics over 50 classic games and yeah it's got pretty much all the games you would want on the Mega Drive on there it's got some really great choices on there one of the best Mega Drive compilations they've ever released I would say really worthwhile guys in purchasing that we've got Team Sonic Racing kind of a backward step by Sumo Digital this you know I absolutely loved um all-star sonic racing all that title that's always hard to bloody remember and i loved um sonic team race and transformed all-star race and transformed and mario kart killer that game i adored that game and um i'm so looking forward to this one a little disappointing because it doesn't delve into the sega ip you know it's just solely the sonic universe which i think is a bit of a letdown after we had the all-star racing games um, I really wish they stuck with that formula. This has got some nice touches, though. Um, as it says in the title, they're Team Sonic Racing. You're in a team, and you can combine together and do different little things to win races and the like. It's all um, 
on, on a team co-op sort of play. There's Toki, which I haven't unsealed. I need to play this because it looks glorious. A glorious 2D modern game um, on a classic. So, you know, I do need to play through that. And then this game, again, loads of people recommended this to me. So I went out and got it. Again, it was cheap, under 20 quid. And that's Valferis, I be believe it's pronounced. Stonking game. Oh, I'm right at the end of this game. God, it gets really hard. It really is. But it's a 2D walk-along, run-and-gun, gory as hell. An absolutely pumping heavy metal soundtrack. Absolutely adore it. Skulls, gore, and metal in space. That, that sums it up, guys. That's what this game is. Bit of a metrovania. You collect different power-ups and different weapons along the way. And a fantastic little game. It really is. Really enjoyed that. And then we've got Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I've got the NES version, Cursed Moon, is it? Um, playing through that digitally, really fun. Um, I picked this one up cheap from game in their sale at Christmas time. And once I've finished Cursed Moon, I'm going to play this. Hopefully they've fixed the bugs, because loads of people have told me this is full of bugs on the Switch and that I should have got the PS4 version. But I like to buy the Switch games, to be fair. Um, but yeah... Looking forward to playing that. And then we've got Sonic Forces, which was a budget release by Sega. A 3D Sonic game. It's not bad, an average game. I enjoyed it. I played it all the way through until I finished it back a couple of years ago when it was released. A great little game, and I've kept it because it's Sega. And then finally, we've got SNK 40th Anniversary Collection. A great set of games here. Quite early SNK games on here. You've got POW and the like, um, and Kari Warriors, that sort of era of games. It's not the Neo Geo games that many are familiar with today, um, but yeah, it's the original arcade stuff. And what's really great about this set is there's free downloads for extra games, so there's quite a collection of games on this now. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed that. I picked this up off Retro Tech 100. Um, when he was um, selling off his Switch games, he done me a great deal on that a while back. So cheers, Kieran. It's still in the collection, mate. So there you go, guys. There's a little look at at the um, yeah another part of the games room or the game the the Sega pad, guys. Um, I just thought I'd show that off. Oh, down the side here, we've got the. The VR gun that I was talking about there, the aim controller. But yeah, there's there's my modern setup in the games pad. Um, let me know in comments, guys. I want to know some more Switch games that you should recommend or any PlayStation exclusive that I should play. As you've noticed, I'm not really into the AAA releases. I do really want to play Uncharted 4. I've got that on my PlayStation Gold ready to play. I absolutely adored that franchise. God of War is another I will pick up a AAA game. Um, but it's more the diverse indie games that I'm interested in. And the retro stuff, guys. So anything you can mention would be brilliant. Um, but yeah, a bit of a different video this time. We're going to get back to the Dreamcast in the next video, guys. But I'm Sega Zombie. And until the next time, goodbye.